Yo guys, what is up? It has been a little while, but this is Scammers from Minidogs, coming back at you with an episode that is a long, long overdue. Episode 27.3 is going to focus on how to delete awards. Anyway, before we dive into that, I want to cover some major changes we've made to our mongo.py file. Uh, if you'd like to skip this part, I will take up but one minute. You've got one minute to skip forward, and I will see you then. Alright, let's start my time. So, firstly, we started off, and I've added a version here. Does nothing, except if you come to us for help, um, I'm going to quote this, and that'll just show me that you're on the right version. Um, I've cleaned up all of the pointer methods and everything so that it uses, you know, values uh, that aren't conflicting, like data underscore ID rather than just ID. Um, our actual methods are a lot cleaner now, uh, so we check for none, mutable defaults, um, taken args and all of that, basically stuff you've seen before. But we also do some assertions, so if we were checking if it was a dictionary um, or not, that's now just an assert statement, tidies it up a lot. And for this episode, we are going to be using something called the delete by custom method. Um, and we've modified that so that it basically returns the results. Uh, so you can see here that it will return the results and we just need those for down the line for reasons I will point out very soon. Anyway, that is my time up. So we're going to dive back in. Basically, all I explained was the changes and we're going to dive right into creating our next command and that's going to be at the bottom of our file you know start it off uh, at commands dot command as we do make some aliases and those are going to be uh, delwarm and we're also going to put a nice little dw in there because i want to be nice and simple we want to make sure it's in a guild only and we also want to make sure that they have the role this role is going to be the one we've used previously we're also going to flip this around because of the way that the executed because it like go from the bottom upwards something cool and kind of weird i learned about the other day and we're going to go async dev delete warn uh, self ctx we're going to take a member which we're going to type into to not l um but rather discord.member and then we're going to take a warn as an integer and point that to none Basically, the point of this is we need someone to delete warns from, um, but we don't know if we want to delete all of their warns or just one. So what we're doing here is just taking in that warn number, but if it's none, we just delete them all. We'll set up our nice little help command info here, so delete a warn, um, or all, all warns from a given number. Now, because of that method I showed you earlier on, in which we are going to be deleting by custom rather than the ID. Um, as we've been using for all of our warn commands, we need to set up a filter dictionary. So this is just going to be set to the member.id as well as the guilt um, that they're in. And then that just lets us do that. And if we have a warn, so like if we want to delete a custom warn, well, one warn rather than all of them, we're also going to add into our filter dictionary just the one we want to delete. Now we're going to be doing something weird here, something we haven't done before. And that's when you go await self.bot.warns. Um, delete underscore by underscore custom. And we're going to go with filter dictionary. Now, oh, yes, and you're asking, why are we returning a value? Well, firstly, we need to check if it was actually deleted. It will return none if it can't find them, or if it, you know, it'll return none if it can't find it, so it doesn't delete it. <laughs> we don't want to tell the user, hey, look, man, I, I deleted that guy's warns view, and then the bot goes, yeah, no, no, I didn't actually delete them, but I'm going to tell you that I did. Like, you can see the problem there, right? <laughs> and we want to check if was deleted dot um, acknowledged as true. And basically what this is, is if you let me pull up the old documentation uh, here, we're using delete many. And that returns a deleted result, and that returns acknowledged. So this is basically just going up to the data as being like, yo, bro, did you like actually delete it? Or um, <clears throat> did you kind of just like think you deleted it, didn't? Anyway, we also need to check that because we want the deleted count, which is how many things we actually deleted so that we don't have to query for that. Um, 
and we can close that. And basically, we're just going to go in here and go select if, if we've got a warn. Um, so, like, if we deleted something, right? But we only deleted one thing. We don't want to be like, yo, man, I deleted like 15 documents for you. We're going to go wait ctx.send, make that an F string, and then just go, yeah, man, I deleted uh, warn number. Put the warn number in there. Let's uh, let's make it nice and formatted in there like that, and it will just put a favorite member dot display name. Uh, if we don't have a warn, you know we want to return await ctx dot send still. But if we only deleted one, we said we deleted one, but now we deleted every single warn, right? But how how, how do we know how many warns we deleted? You know? Well, you remember that thing I said before about deleted count? Well, we do this, we go was deleted, dot, deleted, underscore count, and then, hear me out, right? We put some nice formatting around it, and then I get back to the hear me out point. Warns for, wrap this in some nice quotation marks. They're not even quotation marks, are they? Um, anyway, that's that, wait, cpx dot send, bam, bam, boom, bop, I could not. Any warns for breakfast and good old member dot display name to delete uh, matching your input. Now that I've done that, I'll explain it. So the idea here is we make sure that it's actually been deleted. If we did delete something, did we delete um, just one specific warn or did we delete all of the warns? Uh, if we didn't delete anything, we just say we couldn't delete anything. That's like that'll trip on if you like don't have any warns or if you try to delete warn two but you've only got a one warn in there um yeah there's a specific a few specific use cases we also don't return uh down here like this because it's the end of our function we don't have to and this just improves readability rather than going if um if else if else um i just like this way because i feel it improves readability um yeah anyway let's go here let's run the bot Let's dive right into it. Help. Delete warn. Wow, look at that. Boom, bam, bop. Del warn. Let's delete the warns off myself. Why not? Oh, I've got no warns. Damn it, we need to find someone with warns. Ah, uh, well, I have to put myself in here. Can I warn myself? I cannot remember. It's been a while. You cannot warn yourself of the bot. All right. Yeah, who do we pick? Rogue. Because Rogue. <clears throat> and that, I'll tell you a secret. I was saying that I wasn't using him in a previous recording session. One that I've deleted and you won't see. But he was going on about how, hmm, I'm not the test subject this time. So we're going to use him as the test subject. Test subject, you are. <laughs> And now we can see our uh, warns, uh, we'll go at rogue. Look at this bad boy. Boom, bam, boom. And then if we go DW uh, at rogue, delete a one warn, you can tidy that up so it'll add the S or not the S. That's a challenge for you guys. And then we'll go warns at rogue. Look at that. Anyway, let's go ahead and warn pyro for a bit. Naughty, and then we'll go ahead and go warm pyro. Your docker setup is far too hard. And then we can go once at pyro because I want to showcase something. So you'll notice once these reactions get added, we've got two. So if I go DW at pyro, now the docker setup, you know, it was kind of painful, but it wasn't that bad. So, <laughs> I, I take back what I said. So, and then if we go once at Pyro, look at that. Only got one one. You've got one number twice instead of date. We're about. Anyway, I'll uh, talk to him after that and update it on the GitHub for you. The Mongo.py file will also be on our github uh, from episode 27 i believe it's up there now in fact um and you'll be able to use that and you'll need to update it in order to use the code from this episode anyway that is all for this episode 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.